Dr. Elizabeth Blackwell. In 1949, Dr. Elizabeth Blackwell was the first woman to graduate in medicine. By special permission, she had attended Geneva College in New York State. She was also, also the first woman in the United States to qualify as a doctor. By 1889, there were 3,000 women doctors in the United States. By 1900, 7,000. However, in 1991, only 15.8% of all doctors in the United States were women. When Elizabeth was a child, she moved with her family to New York City where she attended school. Her father was unlike most men of his time as he believed in equal education for both girls and boys. He encouraged his daughters to develop their minds. The Blackwell home was open to many influential people, including nurse Florence Nightingale. The Blackwell family belonged to the anti-slavery society and also worked for the suffrage movement, women's right to vote. There is no doubt that Elizabeth was, therefore, well prepared to break the tradition of no woman doctors. Elizabeth had been practicing medicine in New York City when she was joined by her younger sister Emily, also a doctor. After 15 years of careful planning and raising $30,000, the two Blackwell doctors opened the New York Infirmary for Indigent Women and Children on May 12, 1857. Elizabeth chose this date because it was the birthday of Florence Nightingale, who had been such an inspiration for her. The hospital was the first with a one woman's death. It later expanded to include a woman's medical college. It was the first to train nurses, to train a black woman doctor, Rebecca Cole, to require a four years course of study to have a cancer prevention and treatment clinic. It also set the standards for hospital hygiene. It still stands today on Stevens Square in New York City. Dr. Elizabeth Blackwell is honored every year at Hobart and William Smith Colleges when an award is given in her name to a woman who exemplifies unselfish devotion, sense of dedication, and reverence for life. Dr. Blackwell had not only opened the door for women to become doctors, but had also set the standards of excellence for medical education and practice.